Hey, this is Tom from Inspiration Mind Works, and in this video, we're uh, going to continue our uh, build of our new workstation so we can we cannot get rid of this thing. Okay. Let's dive right in. Uh, if you haven't watched last week's video, I'll put a link up. I think it's probably going to be up over there. Um, but, uh, of course, I'll be pointing to the wrong side. But, uh, yeah, so it's last week's video. Take a look at that one. Um, in last week's video, we went through the design, uh, just a review of the design of this upright, uh, this standing workstation that we're building, and we worked on exporting to G-Code. Another thing that we need to do, though, I mean, I know what it is in my head, but it always helps me to have a print uh, ready to go when I when I go out in the shop and actually start working. So before I get started, I'm going to continue uh, in Fusion, and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna make myself a, a quick uh, print to look at. So let me open up Fusion 360. Let's see. Uh, I'm not gonna use all this, so I gotta edit a bunch of this stuff out, which is fine. Where am I? Okay. Shop projects. Maybe. Don't stand. Nope. Wrong one. Oops. Went too far. It's the CNC mill. Mill workstation. Okay. Uh, so here's our workstation. We'll open up the drawing that I've already made from this as well. But uh, we'll go over how we do this real quickly. So one of the things that we do with all of this when we're um, uh, when we're done, it makes it really easy to do. When you click on File here, one of the things you can do is New Drawing from Design. Right? When you click on that, it's going to bring you into a, a more classic drawing style, you know, two-dimensional drawing uh, in here. And I'm, I've got a warning. Let me let me update here. We'll get the, get our latest because I've already done the work on this one. But basically, um, it allows you to come in here and through your views, right? So you get your base view, you put that in, and then you can do your projected views, right? So uh, top view, my side view, and then a uh, orthogonal view, right? I um, I went ahead and put my critical dimensions in here. I already had most of this stuff. I'm missing one dimension that I need to put in here. Um, although it's really just for the cutting, and I've got it in my head already what it's going to be, but uh, I. But so I'm missing one dimension. We'll add that dimension in, and you notice I also created a, um, a bomb, right? So a bill of materials, uh, right from the drawing or right from my original design. It looked at all the different components, and if you, this is one that I, I caught myself on um, when I originally did my design. I did a mirrored component for those two uprights. Well, I, the even though there were two bodies, it, this is the the bill of materials is looking at components. Okay, so. Uh, it was only showing that as one, and it showed quantity of one. There was no way for me to make change on, on the quantity list for, for whatever reason. Um, so take that as a note. But uh, And this is where I also um, went ahead and started uh, pushing a little bit for the weld symbols in drawings because there's no place to, to do weld symbols. But let's do one thing in here. Let's add the one piece of information that I don't have for my cuts, and that's going to be what's this angle. Right, so we're going to come in here, we'll do a dimension, but let's, we know this is an angular dimension that we're going to look for between here and here. There's my angular dimension, we'll put it out here. And we've already talked about this, we already did these dimensions uh, in the design side of things, but again, this is my reference when I'm not at the computer. Right? This is for me when I'm actually out in the shop and beginning uh, to put this together. So from here, now I've got my, my print. Let me save all my work here. And I'm actually going to uh, print this out and head out into the shop and, uh, and get working on, on getting this assembled. So uh, let's, uh, let's get that going.
one thing I realized I didn't really cover very well when I was doing the uh, the last video on the design, and that is um, when I cut the uh, the shelf, right, the, the part that's going to hold the computer. I was coming at it uh, in the design from a, about a 71. In, in reality, I cut it at 70 degrees, uh, but uh, 71 degree angle, right? And depending on the thickness of your material, or uh, how steep the angle is it's going through, that could cause a problem. Um, I say this because like my plasma cutter and uh, three axis machines can't cut that angle. What I mean by that is there's, if you look at the, the shelf, right, and it's coming in, let's see what's a good angle, okay, it's coming in this way, right, for you guys to see it. Right? There's a lead edge and a trail edge that comes up the top. Right? It's cutting at an angle. Well, in the design that it is. Right? Unless you've got a machine that can tilt the cutting head, you're not going to get that belt. Now what I did, and I didn't show this very well, I, I realized that uh, it's one of those that um, I just kind of internalized and, and I didn't explain it real well, is um, when I exported the file, I made sure that I, I projected the design, the drawing, right, the, the sketch, I projected it from the body. And that means that for each of these cutouts, there was a lead edge and a trailing edge at an angle. When I got the, uh, the sketch, I could have done this in the sketch. So if I were doing it right from G code, I would have done it in the sketch. Um, I did it in uh, the plasma cam system. But basically, I didn't get just a, a, regular, a regular square here, right? What I got was a square with double lines that were slightly offset. And basically that represented the bottom of the bevel and the top of the bevel for each side. What I did was I took the outside perimeter, trimmed out the inside perimeter, and that's the line that I used to cut. So what does that mean? Right? For thin materials like this, what it means is as this comes through, right, it means that there was enough room for it to go at the proper angle and be level. However, uh, it's going to have a gap. And it'll have that gap there, actually it's, it's a pre, it's like making a little V in there, right? So it's already beveled, I didn't have to do anything great for welding up. Um, if this were thick metal, if this were really thick material, uh, or if the draft, or you know, the, the angle that we were going through was shallower, let's say it was the, the opposite angle, the 20 degrees or 19 degrees coming through, right? it wouldn't be correct. You would have to manually bevel that uh, edge. Your spacing would be close, but when you first put it on, it'd be at you know, the opposite angle, and then you'd have to, you know, you'd have to grind on the bottom on this side and the top on this side until it slowly flattened out. And you'd have to do this on both sides, right? So I know I didn't do a great job of explaining that in the design itself, um, and uh, I've had some feedback before I made this video <laughs> Uh, in, so in the in-between time uh, about it and I realized that you know I had already just kind of thought it through and it wasn't an issue so I but uh, yeah I wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that so if you had that question or if you'd like to see more about that uh, leave me a comment um, let's get back to our, our uh, assembly in, in fast forward thanks tacked up. Now I just got to uh, get it welded out. Make sure we keep everything uh, lined up and we're ready to go. Alright. There it is. We're all wrapped up. This wraps up the uh, series as well. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to all my new subscribers. Uh, there's been quite a few in the last few weeks, and I really, really appreciate it. Also, thank you to uh, to the few of you who noticed that I have a Patreon page. Uh, a couple of people have started donating to uh, my Patreon campaign. Um, you know, I do these projects and YouTube videos. Uh, sometimes it's 
It's uh, for jobs for customers, but for the most part, I do this out of pocket. So uh, my Patreon page is really there just to kind of help offset some of those costs. But uh, you know, so if you guys think about it and you you, you uh, like what you see, uh, I'll put a link up here to my my uh, my page. Check it out. Um, I put uh, other things. You know, my my private stuff that I put up there is mostly early access to these kinds of videos, but I'm also going to start uh, a series on there that talks about uh, taking my hobby shop to a full-fledged uh, production shop here, uh, where I'm at right now, and plans moving forward, so that will only be available uh, via my Patreon page. Anyways, thanks for watching, I appreciate it, let's wrap this one up. Um, this one uh, came out alright, I'm ready to put it to use, so I'm done talking, let's get to work. See ya.